I'm thankful uh, to be here. I'm thankful that you are here. And the reason I'm, I'm so thankful and overjoyed that you are here is that you could have chosen uh, to spend your three days elsewhere because you have a lot to do. And we all have a lot to do. We probably are, are the busiest we have ever been, probably the busiest society that there has ever been upon this earth. Even some of you right now are thinking about all of the things that you have to do as soon as you get home. You see, you have a lot to do, and when school starts back, for most of you, I guess next week, you're going to resume this cycle of busyness that you've had a break from for the past couple of weeks. So when you get back to school, you'll have more to do. You'll have another project that you have to do, and you'll have more homework that you have to turn in. You'll have another test that you have to study for. You'll have other extracurricular activities that you have to do. Even the parents in this audience, next week, you'll resume a cycle of busyness as well. You'll have kids that you have to drop off and kids that you have to pick up. Well, wait about that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we don't have to. No, no, um, but you, you, you'll have to do that. You'll have one more dinner uh, to cook. You'll have things around the house that you have to do. We live in a state of constant busyness. See, I wonder that with all that you have to do, all that you have on your plate, all of the things that fill your schedule day after day, after day. I wonder tonight that with all of that stuff, are you missing the best part? See, the best part is often in front of your face, but sometimes we're so busy that we miss it. The best part is staring you in your face day by day, but you miss it because you're focused on all of the other things. But if you focus on all of the other things and you miss the very best part, you're missing it all. And the very best part, the very best part is Jesus. The very best part of your life is Jesus. The very best part of your life right now is Jesus. The very best part of your life tomorrow will be Jesus. Next week will be Jesus. Next month will be Jesus. Next year will be Jesus. The best part doesn't change. But do you miss it? Because you're focused on everything else. See, Jesus teaches us this lesson. And he teaches us this lesson in Luke chapter number 10. And in this story, there are three principal characters. You have Jesus. You have a woman by the name of Martha and a woman by the name of Mary. Now, Jesus and his disciples, they are journeying on and they're coming to this place, this little village called Bethany. And they come to Martha's house. Martha and her sister Mary are there, Jesus and his disciples. Now, Jesus has an affinity for Martha and Mary, their family. And in the Gospels, we read about this family quite often. We read about how Jesus raised their brother Lazarus from the dead. He loves this family, and this family loves Jesus. So he comes this day into Martha's house. Now Martha is the hostess. She has a job to do. Martha has a lot to do. This is a big responsibility. The Savior, the Lord, is coming to her house. And when he comes in, Martha gets right to work because, like us, Martha has a lot to do. So she begins her serving and her serving and her serving. This is her priority 
to serve Jesus. You have many different priorities. School is a priority. Getting good grades in school is a priority. Some of you, sports is a priority. You might have other extracurricular pursuits. Those are priorities. Your youth group, that is a priority. Getting into college, that is a priority. You want to be well-rounded, that is a priority. You might have a part-time job. Well, that is a priority. If you are a parent and you're trying to raise children, well, that is a priority. Now, my microphone came off, and my priority is getting this thing fixed. So we're going to try this a different type of way. Let's try it like that. I just made up something here. I made, invented a microphone. There we go. That is a priority. And you have many different priorities. But with all of the priorities, are you missing the very best part? Martha is serving and serving and serving, but she's missing what's right in front of her. But Mary has one priority. Jesus comes in to the house, and while Martha is going around and serving and serving. Mary takes a place right at Jesus' feet. She's there at his feet because she wants to hear what he has to say. Her priority isn't on serving. Her priority isn't on anything else that's going on in the house. Her priority is Jesus is here. And I want to get as close to him as I possibly can. I want to hang on his every word. So I'm going to get next to him. And I want to listen. As he teaches his word, as he says what he has to say that day, as he expresses what's on his heart, I want to hear it. See, Jesus is in front of you every day. And we have to just simply get close. Instead of having many different priorities, which is an impossibility, why not have one? Why not let Jesus be our priority? So Martha goes around and she's serving because she has a lot to do. Mary has one thing to do, and that's to listen to Jesus. But verse number 40 here in Luke chapter number 10 says, But Martha was distracted with much serving. She was distracted with everything that was going on, everything that she had on her plate, everything that she had on her mind, that she had to do, all of her priorities. She was distracted. And see, all of the things on your plate, they are and can be distractions. See, as noble as the idea of getting good grades and, and aiming very high academically, unless if, if you focus all of your attention there and you leave Jesus behind, that can be a distraction. All of the things that you have to do on social media, well, that can be a distraction. Your friends, as valuable as they may be in your life, they can be a distraction. Parents, your job, that can be a distraction. All of the goals that you have set for yourself, see, those goals can distract you from what's really important. See, we become so distracted, so anxious with school that we miss what's right in front of us. We miss the blessing of learning. We can become so distracted, so anxious about our friends that we miss the blessing of what's right in front of us. We miss the blessing of even having friends. We miss the blessing sometimes of what's right in front of us. We become so distracted with work 
that we miss the blessing of having a job. We become so distracted with life that we miss the blessing of even living. See, when Jesus is at the center, you truly have balance. When Jesus is at the center, you realize that everything else that is going on is simply background noise. But he is the most important thing. So when Martha sees where Mary is, she becomes kind of explosive. She, her emotions begin to get the best of her. Because, see, when a lot is on your mind and you have a lot on your plate, sometimes your emotions get the best of you. And she explosively comes upon the scene and comes straight to Jesus. She, never mind Mary, she bypasses Mary and goes straight to Jesus because she believes that Jesus can make Mary do what she believes she needs to do. Jesus or Martha approaches him and says, Lord, do you not care? that my sister has left me to serve alone. Tell her to help me. Now Jesus, who has been sitting there and teaching, looks at her and says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. You have a lot on your plate. You, you are worried and you're troubled about all of the things that you have to do. Your mind is consumed with that, and it's taking control of your emotions. You're too consumed with all that you have to do. But then he says, but one thing is needed. Young people, I want you to realize one thing is needed. You got a lot that you have to do. And see, there is nothing wrong with what Martha is doing. There's nothing wrong with many of the things that you have to do. There's nothing wrong with aiming high. There's nothing wrong with extracurricular activities. There's nothing wrong with the sports that you play. There's nothing wrong with having friends. There's nothing wrong with these things. But when these things outshine the main thing, then you're off course. And Jesus is simply pointing out to Martha, you're worried and anxious about all of these things, but only one thing is needed. And Mary, she's chosen the best part. See, tonight you have an opportunity to choose the best part. The best part, the best part that is never, ever going away. The things that we fill our lives with, they are temporary. One day they will be here and one day they will be gone. The things that we worry about, when, as you age and, and, and those that are older than you in this audience, they understand this already because they've already been down this road. The things you place a lot of stock in right now, in 10 years, they won't matter. But Jesus will remain. So choose the best part. Now, Jesus is the best part because 2,000 years ago, before you were even born, before you were even thought about, he died for you. And he died for the sin that you were yet to even commit. He died for you, and God gave a sacrifice for your life so that you could have eternal life. This is why Jesus will always be the best part. The sacrifice that he gave proves to me that he is the best part. The sacrifice that he gave for you proves that he is the best part. The fact that he isn't going anywhere proves that he is the best part, the fact that everything else in your life will go away, but Jesus will remain, proves that he is the best part. What I want you to do, I want you to make a commitment to choose the best part. 
See, it brought my heart joy to see pictures of those that were baptized. They gave their lives to Jesus. They had their sins washed away. It did my heart good because I saw that they chose the best part. And I believe that there are more in this audience tonight that can choose the best part. If you've allowed everything else to get in the way, everything else to be more important than Jesus, tonight you have an opportunity to choose the best part. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, you have an opportunity to choose the best part. Each day that you live, each day that the Lord allows you to open your eyes, you choose that day the best part. Before you walk out of your home into the school, you make a decision. I'm choosing the best part. I don't know about anyone else. I don't know what anyone else is going to do. But I am going to choose the best part. Parents, before you walk in the door after a long day of work, you decide, I'm choosing, before I walk in this house, I'm choosing the best part. When you walk in to wherever you may work, you make a decision, I'm choosing the best part. Because every day, every opportunity that we have to put one foot in front of the other, every day that we have the opportunity to breathe in and breathe out. The Lord is right there in front of our face. And you have the opportunity to choose the best part. Choose the best part tonight by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. By being willing to uh, repent of your sins, confess that belief, being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. That's choosing the best part. Making a decision that no longer am I going to allow things to be more important than the Lord. That's choosing the best part. Keeping your eye on the sacrifice that Jesus made for you day in and day out, that's choosing the best part. Deciding that you are going to be a light to your friends, a light to your school, a light maybe even to your own home, that's choosing the best part. You have an opportunity to choose the best part, and I pray that you respond, and I pray that you respond tonight. I pray that you respond Right now, choose the best part as we together stand and sing a song of encouragement. Won't you choose the best part?